Hello, everyone. Glad to be here to introduce the work of graph enhancement. Welcome to join this session. I'm Yan Zhirun, and I'm a network software engineer working for Intel. In the next 30 minutes, another Intel expert, Jingjing and me, will introduce you the basic information of graph remote dispatch for multi-core scaling. Okay, this is our agenda. First, I will do a quick recap so that everyone could understand the basic information about graph library. Next, I will show the gaps and the limitations that we are experiencing when using the graph. Then, I will explain the multi-core dispatch to solve it, as well as design technical details and performance data. Finally, it's about our next step in future. Okay. So, we hope that by the end of this session, you could have a basic impression of our enhancement work. Let's go to the first section, graph recap. The architecture of graph abstracts the data processing as nodes and links them together to create a graph. It can enable modular data processing from simple layer 3 forward to complex workload like firewalls, load balancer, etc. Let's start from the basics. This diagram represents what a typical layer 3 forward looks like. We have several nodes decoupled from layer 3 forward, IX, TX, packet classification, IP lookup, and IP rewrite. When finished initialization, it will create a graph with these configured nodes, then launch to remote worker. The first stage is pulling packets from network adapter. Then the received packets typically traverse the processing graph nodes. Okay. This architecture can bring many advantages. We know that the node is modular and loosely coupled. It could be reusable, flexible, and extensible, and so on. Currently, the graph are designed to work on single core to have better performance. Let's take layer 3 forward as example. Okay, it's a deployed layer 3 forward in work 0. With the increasing number of streams, one worker core cannot handle all business traffic. So, if we want to scale to three workers, how to do? Yes, we could scale up with full graph like this. Each worker will apply layers three forward. Work one and work two will be duplicated with work zero which is excellent of core scaling, but it depends on an external mechanism, such as RSS flow director, to spread the strings before the source node. Of course, we know that our graph is a loosely coupled distributed architecture, 
different nodes could be linked together for a complex workload and could be modified and then reassembled. The different nodes have different work in different scenarios. And each node could be bottleneck for the graph. Naturally, we want it to allow for scaling of each part independently. So, look at this picture. Uh, if, the, if the IP rewrite is the heaviest node, we could put it onto work zero, and other nodes could be executed in the rest of worker, work one and work two. Okay, this process should request the scalability with fine grain as node level. It needs to support core affinity with nodes and dispatch task to another workers. All nodes could be configured with affinity attributions. This will give customers many options on how to orchestrate the nodes to best suit their business needs. Okay. <clears throat> From these slides, we will talk about the design and the implementation. To achieve a flexible framework to deploy the application, you just need to decide where to place the node. Here, we introduce a core routine indicator and a dispatch selector to help to configure the affinity attribution and schedule the task across core. And for each worker, we create an additional multi-producer single consumer work queue naming remote worker queue and a single producer multi-consumer scheduler objects memory pool for holding packets. Each work call will hold a fully cloned graph which is cloned from the main graph and the executor will fetch tasks in remote work queue first and then handle the task in local work queue. If the next node affinity to an, another worker, dispatch it. We could say this part. If we do not configure any affinity call by default, it will work as normal. All nodes will be put and get in local work queue. We could say the remote work queue is empty. The local work queue will hold our task. Okay. Uh, this picture shows a graph with five nodes, A, B, C, D, and E. We could configure to affinity node A with work zero, and B, C, D with work one. And also, we place node E in work two. Okay, we could say the process with green line. Worker zero and worker two will produce new task B and C separately. One packet go into work zero and be processed with node A it decided to put to node B for next stage. Then the packet will be put into the object of node B and dispatched to work one, which is affinity with B. You could see this line. Okay. Here, we could see the yellow node B, which has a tag to affinity work one. This node is generated by work zero and dispatched to the remote work queue belongs to work one. The 
red node C is dispatched to work one by work two. We introduced two APIs for node affinity and the graph clone. The first one, RTE node set L core affinity, will add information in node structure to config affinity L core ID. It should be executed before we clone graph. The next one is RTE graph clone. It will clone a new graph from the main graph and it will clone all nodes with the affinity L-core ID info. This parent contains L-core ID for one worker, which the cloned graph will be placed. After this call, each worker will have a duplicated cloned graph. We also introduce some key functions for creating or destroying remote work queue. And we also add in queue and DQ operations. We use this structure graph scheduled work queue node to have dispatch task between workers. It is our call schedule object, which is the element in our remote work queue. And it mainly contains node offset and packets. Okay, here is an example for a quick test. We use three workers and deploy a simple layer two forward graph with three nodes. To make it easy, we configure the node affinity with L core one by one. It means the first L core is affinity with IX. The next is L2 forward and the last is TX node. Okay. Uh, for user, there is no impact to the API RT graph work. It's the same as before, so that you can still focus on your application. The additional operations for remote work queue is in queue and DQ, which is inserted here. We will call RT graph scheduled work queue process to handle the dispatched task in remote work queue here. And then process the task in original local work queue. Actually, there might be a task not affinity to current worker. We will also check the affinity info here. Okay, if current node affinity with another L core, it will call RT graph scheduled node in queue to schedule. This node carried with packets will be dispatched to the specific worker. Current worker will finish this graph work with all packets processed. Then the next worker, which will be able to fetch task in remote work queue. Then the worker will continue to process the packets. Okay. These packets will go over the graph until sent out or dropped. As you know, this is the life cycle of one packet in graph with our remote dispatch. These slides will show some details for remote work queue. We could see the left part for in queue operation. There is a loop to handle all node objects. We could say the tag, submit again. 
for the first round, we will get memory from remote worker. Then enqueue the task with packets until current node is finished. The node index will be reset to zero. And now, this node will, with many packets, are successfully dispatched to remote worker for next stage. Okay, it's in queue part. And for the DQ part, we will get the node first here. The DQ operations would get many different nodes and then handle it with all carried packets. Node process. Okay, finally, return the memory. Each call of work, we will execute in queue and DQ once to avoid the starvation. This is our test topo. We use Intel Ethernet controller and the Xeon God CPU for testing. To make it easy, we use three workers and we choose the simple workload, layer two forward, to compare the performance. For the top one, we use memory if to help to dispatch packets across core. And another one is our mechanism. We use remote work queue to help dispatch task. The traffic comes from Exia, received by call zero. Dispatch with work queue to call one, and then go to call two. Finally, send it back to Exia. Okay, then we choose layer three forward graph to test uh, the overhead by introducing our dispatching approach. Okay. Okay. We choose different packet lengths for testing from small packets to large and get conclusion that we have better performance and low overhead. In the left chart, the blue is a layer two forward with memory if, and the red is layer two forward graph with our remote work queue dispatch mechanism. We could find that our remote dispatch approach could have better performance than memory if. The right chart, it shows that there is a very low overhead when we introduce remote work queue. It's very small. For our use case, the most overhead com comes from IO, so we could notice that the data reach to line rate in the second and third column quickly. It would be more obvious if we could use a complex workload. Uh, yes, it would be our next steps. Here is our current work and the next steps. Uh, you could find our IFC patch in community. Uh, comments and suggestions are welcome. And for the next step, uh, we will do performance tuning and micro benchmark. And we will uh, extend the node affinity from one call to call list. So the call can be skilled and so on. Uh, this is a joint effort, thanks to these colleagues. Uh, that's all for our session. Thank you very much. Okay.
Okay, we should have Jan on the, yeah, there he is, live feed. Welcome, are you able to hear us? Jan, are you able to hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear. Ping Jing, hello. Can you hear? Sure. I can hear you. Uh, yes, I can hear. Excellent. I uh, wanted to see if we have any, thank you for joining us. Uh, and for providing that talk. Uh, what is if we have any questions uh, from our in-house audience here? Do we have any questions for Jing Jing or Yan? I do have a question here. Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, I have a question on the overheads that you've presented. You, you said that the overhead is around 0.1 percent, which is which is extremely nice, uh, but in the way how? Uh, hello. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. okay, you can hear me now. Sh should I rep repeat the question? Please. Okay. So, can you, can you hear us? Hello, can you hear us? Um, yes, no, yes, no. Oh, okay. Uh, hello, I can't hear. You, you, can't, you can't hear me? Can't. Oh, he, he can, okay, okay. Can I? Yes, you just go shoot the question. Okay, I'll shoot the question. Um, the question is, uh, how do you achieve such a good overhead of 0.1% like this, that's, that's great. And uh, um, with a lot of memory allocation, I mean, on the, on the slides you've shown, there is a memory allocation, there is a mem move, there is, a, there is also, you know, essentially you're, you're moving data between cores, right? So the L2 level of, of sharing is there, but the, the data falls out of L1 cache. So how do you get such a good um, overhead? Uh, I think the benefit most uh, comes from the RT ring, good design and the memory pool, good design. So we use the uh, RT ring and uh, uh, to the NQ DQ the uh, work and uh, a memory pool to allocate uh, for the uh, work queue nodes. Um, there is uh, not much uh, overhead uh, for the packet moving. So just for the work distribution. Okay, so so this mem move that was there on the on the slides, that's just uh, like pseudocode. It's not actually doing the mem move, right? It's not it's not a mem copy essentially. Uh, which part uh, are you pointing to? Um, I believe on the DQ side there was a DQ burst, and after that there was a there was a loop that was doing the mem moving, the, the mem move calls, and I'm. That oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, that's just a few, uh, just the objects. Uh, that's a point. No, no, no actual data. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. We have a couple of questions online. The first is from Govink Kolch. Uh, says, "What about when graph nodes on different workers need to operate on same data structures in the data plane?" How do we resolve concurrency issues? Oh, no, uh, it's a very good question. So uh, right now we haven't, we haven't, uh, uh, we haven't uh, do such uh, test case for the uh, different nodes sharing the uh, same data. So I think uh, there might be some help function to uh, get the ownership of the sharing uh, data. So. This is also our uh, one part of our past funding work. Thank you, thank you for this question. And then another question from Matthias Ronblom asks, have you ever considered using a DPDK event device for load balancing? Yeah, yeah, there is, I think uh, Declan or some other guys is working on that part for the uh, event there for the load balancing, yeah. 
So uh, here, I'm, uh, but I'm not very clear. Uh, maybe we can wait for uh, his presentation, but I'm not very clear uh, what is uh, he's working on, whether it's working on the worker distribution or it works on the data distribution. So the difference for the, the I think our key uh, differ differential here is about uh, we are not, not working on the um, package distribution dispatch we are working on the worker or task dispatch. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks for this work. So yeah, I will be reviewing this uh, graph patches because I was done the base work. Um, so I would like to ask one thing, like I think the overhead is minimum because you are using one core, right? So essentially it's a single producer, single consumer case. But yeah, if you yeah, start yeah. using multiple cores, then contention will come, and I think yeah, 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 yeah. We need to do much more uh, micro benchmark to manage that. Yeah, I think that's the area. I, that's that's the reason why I think initially we thought of having a graph which is per core kind of thing, so that. Mm. Uh, we don't have any multi-core contention and the one they were saying like uh, the synchronization between different nodes are also not easy. Yeah, but having said that, I think it's a good thing to have multiple nodes. Yeah, I, one suggestion I have, I will be replying to the mailing list, but I think uh, maybe we shouldn't introduce a new if checks in the worker path instead of that we can have a different header file uh, with a different work case so that different style of work case can be selected at runtime by choosing some of the flags. So I will give more okay, details on okay. yeah, yeah, so that okay, we don't okay, need to. thank you. Yeah, thanks. So you, you prefer to have a new API but just hide the uh, dispatch actions with the current uh, worker function, right? No, no. Uh, it's no. a new header file and with the same APA name and you can, application can select through a yeah. hash define. So saying hash define worker is uh, uh, standard or hash define worker is uh, node specific, then include the worker.h, then select the new set of functions will be get included. And uh, so from application perspective, there will not be any change, just matter of including a right defines and get that in. I, I will have a proper comment on the mailing list, but yeah, I think it looks good. But yeah, I think only concern is our law when it comes to the multi-core thing where multiple nodes, I meaning um, uh, when it gets yeah. to the multiple multi-producer, multi-consumer state, then I think this overgood is going to shoot up big time. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. Thank you, thank you. Any other questions here in the audience for Jingjing or Jiran? No? All right, well, we'd like to thank both of you for making that presentation available and staying on to answer questions. Thanks. <laughs>